I'm coaching, but I also want to transition into helping businesses because Mm -hmm. that's where I see the biggest problem is. I want to help businesses transform their processes, Mm -hmm. right? Like help them help business owners actually see that if they help their employees in the company, that they'll keep their employees, right? That everybody can win and everybody can grow together, right? It'll help culture. So recently I, I left another job. So I had gotten into this job because it was an opportunity for me to build a whole department. And it was AC, mm-hmm. of course, because that's my skill set. So I ended up going in there and that's where I found Grant Cardone. Okay. So I found Grant Cardone on YouTube, of course, and I really liked his energy. And then I, I realized, right, to build or help build this company, I needed to learn sales. Now, that was one part that was sort, sort of lacking in, the, in my um, skill set. And so because Grant offered that, I, I got onto his Cardone University and I started training myself, right, training myself. And I ended up using that to help build the company. So I look for business owners. So usually it's solopreneurs or entrepreneurs. And then I help them with their different mindset, with their attitude, with goal setting, you know, like we just, I just basically assess what they need and where they want to go. And that's what I help them with. And I have been talking to business owners. So I do want to help them like with their marketing and their different processes, like helping them with their employees, you know, sitting down with them teaching them how they can help their employees develop goals and within the company how if they reach their goals the company wins also you know so it'd be like a win-win so as a child I really grew up on the poor side in Oahu Hawaii and and really what our dinner table looked like was different every night it wasn't really the same because our family we had a really strong family bond and when one family member was struggling. We all sort of ended up living together. So mm-hmm. it was, we were like, maybe had a lot of us in a little cramped room. Yeah. But what we talked about was just mostly family and upbringing and how we needed to stick together. So a lot of things I didn't learn about that I think I should have learned was like about money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how to, how to go set, how to become a forward thinker, mm-hmm. how to do what I need to do to get where I want to go right? Like vision building, that types of things that I feel I never really learned as a child. What I did really learn though, was that my parents and my family, they were all hard workers, but they were in a wrong vehicle, Mm -hmm. which is what I know now, right? That they were taught what everybody else is taught, right? Go to work, get a good job, save your money and just keep working until you retire. But that's Mm -hmm. not really how it is nowadays, right? You need different information so that you can get to a different place. Yeah, yeah. So, I I mean, that's what it was. Yeah, I I love that you have that much reflection, you know, on the way that you grew up and, you know, kind of changed your your mindset there. And I actually lived on Oahu for uh, about six months or so. So very familiar, you know, with the area and that, which, you know, a lot of people, you know, think of Oahu, obviously there's beautiful areas, but, um, you know, there's, there's other areas there too. So, um, so, so talk a little bit about, I guess, when did it, when did it strike you that you wanted a, a, a you know, a different way of life? You, you know, you, you started thinking differently than, you know, maybe what you were exposed to when you were growing up. So it started when I was, I've always had like an entrepreneurial spirit. So in high school, I joined the business club, right? So I, I did everything and, and that's where I started learning about businesses and how you can, you know, make more money because at that point in life, I want to make more money. Yeah. Which is what I was growing up with. Right. And I, I figured out that it had to be through a business, but the thing I didn't realize was that it had to be the right type of business or you needed to get a mentor, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody teaches you that you need a mentor or you need to learn from people who are doing it, right? So I was learning from teachers, but the teachers weren't doing it. They were teaching. Yeah. And that's where it started. So I started hopping from businesses to businesses. And because of, um, you know, so I was a teenage mom. I got pregnant in high school and then I ended up having two children. And at that time I was married. And, um, I guess because we were really young and we didn't know how to communicate, my marriage didn't last. It, yeah. it yeah. had issues, right? So I ended up getting a job at um, an air conditioning company. Okay. And that is where I, I started seeing, right, the different corporate structures. But one day my boss came in and he told me basically that I wasn't doing my job right and I had 30 days or he was going to fire me. 
-hmm. Now I had two kids, not a good marriage, right? They were young. They were like four and two. And I was thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do? Right. Yeah. Then I thought, okay, what I needed to do is I needed to develop my skills, right? I needed to get better at my jobs. So for one, I don't lose my job. And for two, so that nobody ever can tell me that again, which is why I started learning and growing. I mean, that's where it really started. And then I started investigating different businesses. Of course, in that arena, I was looking at MLMs and Mm -hmm. I love them. And that's how I started with the personal growth, you know, learning about the reading and associating with like-minded people and Mm -hmm. getting around that type of influence because that, that was really lacking for me. Yeah. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. And it's, it's interesting that you, um, I I think a lot of people that might've been in that situation, you know, they, they may have just said, okay, you know, what do I need to do to, 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 to make it better for, you know, myself in this position, in this job, but you had the mindset where, you know, yes, you, you, you felt like you needed to improve your job, but you also were looking at it as I want to improve me, improve my skills so that, you know, I can, I can use this, you know, later on in life Would that, would that be accurate? That would be accurate. I mean, because I realized, so one thing I always remember is when I went into my boss, because it was an AC company, and mm-hmm. it, it is a very male dominated field, the technical side. Mm-hmm. And I was growing and at that point, I had learned pretty much the whole office side of the company, because I had told myself I wasn't going to get fired. Nobody was yeah. ever going to tell me that again. Yeah. And so I had gotten taken care of all that. And I was training people. So I went to my boss, and I told him, you know, I wanted to become a technician. And he basically told me that, if you chose that route, then I wouldn't hire you. And I was like, well, what are you talking about? Right. Because it's just a transfer of skills. Mm-hmm. And then I realized that I needed to go outside of that environment to grow and become better because, you know, that's limits. Right. And that's where I realized that not only, you know, um, he was putting limits, but because he was saying it to me and, my past, my history, right? The, the limitations, I needed to get past all of that in order to start growing and becoming better, which is one of the things I've always done, right? Going to businesses and I've learned the different businesses. So that, that always stuck with me, right? That I cannot allow somebody to limit what I think, but the worst limitation is myself, right? What I think, what I believe, what I'm doing. Yeah. And, and where do you think you, you got that, that mindset from where, you know, again, I'm going to overcome, you know, these people that might be putting these blockers. And, and I guess just to finish that thought before we kind of switch to the next thing, but when, when he said that, when you told him that you wanted to be a technician, I'm assuming you want to learn the other side of the business, you know, you understood how it all ran, but you didn't necessarily understand, you know, how to replace a, you know, a blower motor or something like that, that, you know, somebody needed to have fixed. So you wanted to understand the technical side as well. Um, I mean, that's a lot of people I think would, would not necessarily want to take that step because they feel like, you know, that, that side of it, you know, I don't need to understand that side of it. As long as I can understand the business, you know, end of it, I can find people who can, you know, do all the installs and all of that. What was it about, you know, learning the entire business, you know, front to back that, you know, kind of drew you to wanting to learn that? And then also, did you get that chance with that employer or did did he let you go uh, and you had to go on your own and and figure that out? So the reason I think I wanted to become a technician is because, you know, I understood from the office side and the scheduling and the dispatching side, right, how to deal with the issues. But, you know, when I had to learn how to deal with the technicians, because that's a whole different um, communication mode, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like I needed to understand what they were going through when they were there, which is one of the reasons I wanted to learn to be a technician. And to make sure also, I think it was in me that I didn't want anybody to say that I couldn't do a job. Mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and the only way you can do a job is actually if you go and do it yeah yep. and so I I think I got that from my mom so my mom was also a teenage mother when I was growing up she was always having to work but she never went to college and I'm really proud of my mom because today she's one of the top general managers in, um, on Oahu mm-hmm. but she started off as a messenger because no college degree you know she had two kids also out of high school and she just worked her way up and she learned every single aspect of property management, then commercial leasing, and then she learned about retail leasing. She started running the places. So every single aspect. And I think from watching her and 
how she had to overcome it because her field also was very male dominated at the time. Mm -hmm. And she just overcame it all. And she had a saying that kind of stuck with me, you know, um, put your plans in your sand and your goals in concrete. (laughs) I like it. I like it. Uh, I've never heard that before. I like that. (laughs) So she, you know, just watching her. I mean, and it's amazing as a child, what she learned, right? You see the grit, you see the determination and, and all the hurt and pain too, but mostly overcoming. Right. And so now she's, you know, more recognized. She it's because of all of her hard work that nobody sees. Right. So it's I think that's where I really got that. And and then when my boss told me about, you know, that um, if I became a technician, he wouldn't hire me. So what I did is I married a technician Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, I didn't ever become a technician, but I've learned the technical side from my husband. Okay. Okay. I am not as good. Be as I would have been if I went to school but then that's not the whole point of me wanting to be a technician it was just me understanding how I could help the technician better because yeah. that would make my job easier right that makes you, sense. You know, yeah. yeah so so our dinner tables talking about you know oh, technician yeah, yeah yes. AC <laughs> I love it I love yes. it yes installs so, so 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 what are you what are you doing today talk a little bit about what you what you do today So today I help people. So right now I'm coaching, but I also want to transition into helping businesses because Mm -hmm. that's where I see the biggest problem is. I want to help businesses transform their processes, Mm -hmm. right? Like help them, help business owners actually see that if they help their employees in the company, that they'll keep their employees, right? That everybody can win and everybody can grow together, right? It'll help culture. So recently I, I left another job. So I had gotten into this job because it was an opportunity for me to build a whole department. And it was AC, of course, because that's my skill set. So I ended up going in there and that's where I found Grant Cardone. Okay. So I found Grant Cardone on YouTube, of course, and I really liked his energy. And then I, I realized, right, to build or help build this company, I needed to learn sales. Now, that was one part that was sort, sort of lacking in, in my um, skill set. And so because Grant offered that, I, I got onto his Cardone University and I started training myself, right, training myself. And I ended up using that to help build the company, right? So okay. I ended up learning how to sell and selling, I mean, quite a lot, like, over 1.5 and equipment and sales and services. But when I went to my boss and I told my boss, okay, you know, when I hit this certain area, I would like to just go in more into sales because I found I really like sales. I really Mm -hmm. enjoy being around the people, the energy, you know, the marketing side of it. And at one point he was like, okay, but it sort of backtracked, right? So, you know, as we we're growing and the company was growing, the, the service side was growing, you know, I guess I, I, I'm not really sure what happened, but he wanted me to kind of stay there. And I just couldn't because yeah. I felt that if I stayed there, then I'd be stuck. Yeah. Putting more could, limits on you. Yeah. Right. I would be stuck and, and I get it, right? You know, a lot of business owners, which is what I see, they get afraid of losing what is being built, right? Mm-hmm. Without seeing that the long-term vision of what could be, which is what mm-hmm. I told him, right? You know, like if we could train people to take my spot because anybody can, is trainable. You can train them to do a job. Yeah. And whether or not it takes one, two or five people, it doesn't matter, right? As long as you have more people because then that one person can go out and do other stuff, right? So it helps everybody grow. And, you know, like I sup- I really enjoyed doing all of that. But then when I got the limitation, that's where I thought, okay, no, I need to go out and start helping people, start introducing them to the sales techniques of Grant Cardone. And also, you know, just helping their employees because I think deep at heart, I've always been sort of an employee type mode person, but I just... If I didn't go out and learn, which a lot of people don't realize that all they have to do is go out there and get the information because a lot of it is free. Yeah. Yeah. But that has to be like told and taught. So that's kind of the direction I'm going in. Yeah. No, that makes sense. So, so what were some of the, the realizations that you sort of walked through? You've got all of these years of experience in the, you know, the technical side and you're running, operating the business, and then you were exposed to the sales side of things. Um, Do you remember anything, you know, specifically that stood out like, wow, I wish, you know, I wish I would have known that before, or um, like, 
I, I guess the 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 big transformations that you went through when when you you sort of opened those those doors. Was there anything that sort of stands out to you as being like, you know, man, that that's really really powerful stuff. I wish I I wish I would have known that earlier. Well, the biggest is like I said, finding mentors, finding people within the business. Like I've always that would that was one of my dreams was to build my own AC company, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's where my skills are. And I wish I went out and I found really successful AC companies and I learned from them. I mean, even just to intern for free. I mean, it, it wouldn't have mattered to me. Like, I wish I knew that I needed to go out and be around that type of people, people who are thinking bigger, people yeah. who wanted more. I wish I knew that. I wish I was taught about mentors, you know, about finding leaders, finding people with big visions. That is like transformational for me. Yeah. I think everybody needs that. And, and what is it that, uh, about those people? You know, again, from from a, a tactical standpoint, it sounds like you had all of the skills that you that you would have needed to run and start your own company. Um, what was it about you know interacting and and meeting these other owners that you know sort of lit up your lit up your eyes? Like what what was it that you're like, wow, you know, I never thought of that before. Or, or, you know, again, these are, these are people that, you know, probably had the exact same skill sets and background that you had, but what was it that you felt like was missing in your life that, that these other people may have been uh, exuding? Well, looking back, I think the biggest for me is belief. It's mm-hmm. confidence in myself. That's what I was really lacking. And that's why when I reflect back on it, I think if I had been around more types of that kind of big thinking people, it would have helped to build that belief, helped to build that confidence, because it's not the fact that I, I can't do it. If I can, go, if I go into a company, I know I can, but it's just the belief of standing on my own and knowing I can do it on my own. Right. So yeah. that's a belief and confidence that I think if I had found those type of people, I would have grown into and, you know, yeah. learned which, which obviously, you know, the sales side of things, that's, that's really what, sales is all about is having that confidence to be able to stand there and say, yes, this is, you know, this is the right fit for you, or this is the right solution, or, you know, this is your best path and confidently being able to, to show people that. So I'm sure that that probably helped boost you in that, that direction as well. It yeah. Did. It did. yeah. What, what, um, talk a little bit about grants courses and that, what, what were some of the, like, how, how does it work? Um, you know, I, I've never gone through it. I've obviously seen these, you know, mm-hmm. grants obviously very in your face and very proud of everything that he's done and, and all the people that he's helped. Um, I'm, I'm just curious, like, what were some of the standout moments that, that you remember going through that process that, uh, really sort of helped catapult you to that next level that you were, that you were really, you know, looking for. Right. So, I mean, when I first found Grant, it was, he was talking about um, self-confidence is Cardone's own, right? And then I got onto Cardone University and really, really it's, everybody calls it a sales training, but it's actually a personal development thing. I mean, if you go through it, he teaches you about money. He teaches you about self-confidence, how to believe in your, you know, whatever you're selling, no matter what it is, if it's a service or a product, he teaches you how to communicate. That's the biggest thing, how to understand people, you know, and how to basically agree be a better person. That is what I got the most from going through all his courses. And like I said, it varies, right? So he has, he teaches you about selling over the phone, but mostly for me, it was his financial Mm -hmm. because of the fact of how I grew up. I was really bad on that. I was lacking in that financial education. And because I learned from Grant, I've gotten better, right? Mm -hmm. So every day I learn and I get better. Because it's not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing process. So I do train every day because I need to like not get in that zone where, you know, that limiting zone, right? Yeah. So his one for me was really the financial education. And so he just recently came out with his book, 10X Kids, which is another of his books. And I think that is so incredible. So I'll be meeting with a nonprofit so that we can see what we can do to help kids. Because I think that's kind of the kind of things that you need to help children. I mean, like I have three grandchildren and they've read it and it, it's, it's a really simple book, easy to read. And it's based off his 10 X book. Mm-hmm. And I think back and I think, whoa, if I had gotten this kind of information back then, yeah, it would have advanced me so much faster. And that's the, that's what I really love about, you know, grants courses is because of the fact that 
it doesn't only help you become a better person, but it helps change your thinking, which is, I think, the biggest part for anybody. It's their mindset. You know, yeah, how, yeah. how you think is everything. The, 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 and the, the book, the, the kid's book, what ages would you say that that would be applicable to? So it's, I would say maybe like seven and up. It's okay. a real simple read, 40 pages. It's a big book. Um, and it's great. It's really simple. But then you can convert the things you learn, right? And then you just talk about, talk to the kids. So in it, he, he talks about thinking big. In it, he yeah. talks about, you know, financial education. He talks about communication. Stuff that's really important that everybody needs to learn. Yeah. But if you learn it as a child, right? It changes your thinking. So you tend to think you can accomplish more. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, it gives you that confidence that, you know, a lot of people take a long time to develop. Um, you, you mentioned that you're coaching today. What, what types of um, coaching clients do you look for? So I look for business owners. So usually it's solopreneurs or entrepreneurs. And then I help them with their different mindset, with their attitude, with goal setting, you know, like we just, I just basically assess what they need and where they want to go. And that's what I help them with. And I have been talking to business owners. So I do want to help them like with their marketing and their different processes, like helping them with their employees, you know, sitting down with them, teaching them how they can help their employees develop goals and within the company, how if they reach their goals, the company wins also, you know, so it'd be like a win-win. Yeah. Yeah. And do you feel like a, a lot of people, a lot of business owners are receptive to that? And and what I mean by that, I I've I personally believe in in um, you know allowing employees to grow, even if that means growing out of my company or you know whatever company it is. So I'm I'm all for that. But do you feel like a lot of pushback from you know from uh, company owners that may feel sort of like what you were um, what you were exposed to, where people are trying to hold people back and hold on to them so that it obviously benefits themselves. Do you find, do you, do you feel like in your interactions, more people are still in that mindset where they're, they're trying to hold on to everything rather than, you know, letting everything flourish and, and grow out of I, curiosity? Yeah. I mean, I do find that a lot of business owners to have that mindset. And then, you know, I've been told quite a bit, right, that we've always done it this way and it's just fine the way it is. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it's not, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're either growing or you're going backwards. Yeah. There's no thing the same. And when they, when they tell me that, then I realize that that's a mindset issue that they have, right? So yeah. I just keep going back and just keep offering it because, yeah, there is pushback on that. But I think eventually it's, it's going to come, it's going to happen because a lot of employees are now very disenchanted, yeah. but they do want to stay within the company. So if you're going to spend money to have your employees, why not help them grow in your company so that you guys both can win from it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and what does, what does um, today look like, you know, in a company that, that you would start with and then what ultimately would it look like um, you know, if everything went perfect and sort of went through this transformation, do you have any, do you have any insights into what that, you know, what that company could turn into or what, you know, how the, how it could change? So, so basically everything starts from the initial contact with the customer, right? Mm -hmm. So if you need, if you want your customer to have that really big wow type of or transformation experience where they want to keep coming back, where they get referrals, then it starts when they first call in or you call them right? It's that initial contact. So my ideal rule would be like, you know, when you go in, the customer calls, the, the first person they contact, talks to them, makes them feel good, gets all their information, and then helps them to get where they need to go. Mm -hmm. Because nowadays, when you call in, most of the time you get the auto message, or you got to press a button, and then you got to wait for like five minutes on the phone. And it's very frustrating. Yeah. She, especially in the AC environment, right? Everybody wants to get cooled now or it's all hot or it's leaking, yeah. right? So it's when you're already, when they're calling and they're already frustrated to have to listen to some, a phone, you know, just that message thing and you pressing buttons and then they don't even call. I mean, they don't even answer the phone and you got to leave a message and then you got to wait for them to call back. And yeah. a lot of them don't even call you back, not at least for a while, right? So that to me 
would need to be changed and then everything else within it, right? Like the communication between the technician and the dispatcher, right? Mm -hmm. the, the communication between the customer and the scheduler, between the parts vendor and the technician, right? Between the supervisor and the scheduler. So it, it all kind of intertwines with each other, the accounting department with the technician because they missed something. And yeah. then from down, you know, from the top down, I mean, it all is, it's communication, right? So a good working environment is where you can always communicate. Everybody's on the same page. They all know what the end result is for the company and how mm -hmm. reaching that end result is going to be how they get their goals too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it, and it sounds like you're, you're also, um, streamlining or, or eliminating frustrations along the way, right? I know that I've, I've experienced this in a number of different businesses that I've seen where there could be, you know, a, a, um, a process, a procedure, maybe it's creating monthly reports or something like that, that is, you know, just a complete nightmare for everyone who's involved in creating whatever that thing is because there's a little bit of information over here and then there's information over here and somebody forgot to do this and you got to hurry up and do it. And all of this pressure, obviously, all of the, the stakeholders are all you know, waiting for these reports and you're trying to pull all of this information, this fragmented information you know, from all over the place. So you know, it, it helps streamline that, which then, you know, again, streamlines so much of the company, which then allows people to do more uh, and be more productive. Would you, would you agree with that? Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, if if most employees, well, the employers don't tell employees what they need from them and when they need it by, they're just going to get it when they get it. And that's what yeah. causes the frustration, you know, because it wasn't laid out. It wasn't communicated clear enough and told to them that this is what we need in order to get where we need to go. Right. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. No, makes perfect sense. Makes perfect sense. Jamie, this is fantastic. Um, if people want to learn more about you, your, your services, what would be the best way to reach out and get in touch? Well, I'm on LinkedIn under Jamie Wong. I have a website. It's at therealjamiewong.com. I'm on Instagram and Facebook the same way. And that's how you can get a hold of me. Excellent. Jamie, this is fantastic. Uh, I wish you nothing but success. And uh I know that I know that you're going to succeed. You know, can't can't put any barriers in front of you. You'll you'll just jump right over them and and uh, find a way to make it happen. So so that's Thank great. That's a great mindset to be able to have. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And thanks again for this opportunity. No problem.